If you have your Bibles this morning, I'd invite you to turn to Hebrews chapter 10. And as you're turning there, um, I want to issue a little bit of an apology. For those of you following along with our devotionals um, for the sermon series, um, Google in its infinite wisdom of autocorrect decided to turn the word spur into spit twice. (laughs) So... I would just like to say, I encourage you to not spit on one another. Um, Now, I I figured that with a project as big as that was, there would be a few, um, you know, mistakes here and there. I was not expecting it to go that far. So, um, sorry, and hopefully you have not put that into practice yet. So... Well, this morning we're continuing our conversation about the importance of Christian community. And we started off talking about how God gave us the church for a reason. That our faith has been designed to be lived out in the context of community. Christianity is not an independent thing, but it is a communal thing. And we grow the most when we are connected to one another. We need one another, and much of the Christian faith simply cannot be done without community. You can have faith independently, but I've always questioned how long can that faith truly survive outside of the community of believers, because God designed Christianity with community in mind. And last week we talked about how we are a centered community, that Jesus is the center of our faith. He's the center of our community. Um, Every community on earth forms around a center. You have communities centered around working out. You have communities centered around politics. Um, And there is a reason that communities formed and something that binds them together. Well, for us, it's Jesus. It's our mutual love of Jesus and the binding power of the Holy Spirit. And so we talked about last week, to make sure that we keep Jesus the center of our community. Because no other cause, no matter how good and admirable that cause is, can take the place of Jesus at the center. It will only lead to problems if we take Jesus out of the center. So then, here's where we're going. If Jesus is the center of our community, and knowing him is the reason we come together, then the goal of Christian community is to help one another get closer to that center. We are to help others move closer to Jesus, to move one another in the community towards Jesus. Hebrews 10, our passage this morning, 24 through 25, says this. And let us consider how we may spur on one another towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. One thing I've learned from playing a lot of sports is how important teammates are. Uh, When I played football, you had to learn how to trust your teammates. Um, That when a play was called, you knew what your job was, and you had to trust that the person over here was also doing their job. Um, You had to learn how to interact with them in ways that helped them as well. When someone made a mistake, it never helped anyone to angrily jump on them and blame them for what just happened. But instead, you encouraged them and you picked them up because you needed them on the next play. No matter how bad their mistake was, you needed them to give their all the next time the ball was snapped. And... When you made a mistake, and all teammates make mistakes, it meant the world when teammates came and encouraged you and picked you up and gave you the confidence that you could go back out there and do what you needed to do. Well, in the church, we need our teammates. (laughs) We need each other. What I've learned over the years is that the church, the faith community to which you belong, it isn't just about believing, but it's about belonging. Simply believing the same thing is not enough to make us the kind of community that we need to be in order to build God's kingdom. But when we belong to each other, 
When tight bonds are formed, we become something different and more powerful and more effective in the world that we live in. And this is even more important than ever right now because, as I've said, we live in a world that's starved of community. And this includes both Christians and non-Christians alike. And studies have shown this is especially true of young people that with the way technology has taken over many aspects of relationships, I mean, a lot of relationships these days are simply based on social media or text messaging and just technology. And so as we live in that era and in the era of COVID, there has been a lot of separation and we see that the world is starved of genuine community and relationships. And that's why we've seen things begin to form that meet these needs. I said last week, some of the closest communities I've seen in recent years have been gym communities, workout communities. I mean, I've seen these people, they do everything together and call each other when they're not there at their normal time. Um, That around the center of exercising together, these close-knit communities have been formed because, partly, they can't find community anywhere else. Well, if that's true of places like gyms, how true should it be of the community that has formed around the center of Jesus Christ? As the world is thirsty for community and relationships, shouldn't, be, shouldn't the church be the place that they find it most of all? That's right. And here's what's interesting and what's taking place. That as there's been studies come out, um, there's been a lot of work done in this area, that people are seeking out belonging before believing. They are not as interested initially in the ins and outs of your beliefs Instead, they're more interested initially in a warm and welcoming family-like atmosphere that they can feel like they belong to. Traditionally, I think we thought of the church community more like this. We'll put up a graphic. Um, So we have the church community, and the only way to enter the community is through beliefs. That you are outside of the community until you believe the same things the community does, and that belief ushers you into the community. So until you adopt the beliefs of the community, you're on the outside looking in. Um, And our main goal in this is simply to get people into the community. Does that make sense? So your goal here is nothing else, just get them inside the circle. This may not be the best approach all the time. Now, I'm not saying that a profession of faith isn't important because um, you are not part of the body of Christ until you have received Christ. Right? There, there is a line there. Um, and I'm not talking about that we shouldn't have some requirements for things like leadership and things like that. But what if the key to getting many of these people from the outside into a place where they receive Jesus and have a profession of faith comes through welcoming them into the community and loving them and allowing them to belong first. What if belonging can precede believing? Now again, I'm not minimizing the need for a profession of faith, but in a world that has starved the genuine relationships, we're seeing a trend is that people want belonging, they want community, they want to be a part of something. And what they have found is that when people begin to belong to a community, then that community can speak into their lives and shape their beliefs. Because if they see the love of Jesus in action and experience the love of that community, then they won't be able to help themselves into asking, why do they act the way they do? Why is this community the way that it is? And one book, um, I read as research for this, um, talking about the faith of young people. Here's what they said. You may think that young people are staying because of beliefs, but it's more often about an experience that feels like family. For teenagers and emerging adults, depth of relationship is what opens the door to a deeper exploration of belief. First relationship and then formation. First belonging, then belief. And eventually, these blend into one 
fluid movement. I like that, that they blend into one fluid movement. And what we're seeing across the board around the country is that when people feel loved and they feel they're part of a community, they are, open, they are more open to knowing and wanting to know what is behind this community. What is it that has shaped these people's beliefs to treat me with such love and affection? And it opens the door for them to experience the saving grace of Jesus and go from belonging to the community to belonging to the body of Christ. Amen. And you see Jesus exemplify this time and time again. How many times did Jesus welcome the sinners, tax collectors, the prostitutes, the diseased, the lost? He welcomed them and showed them love and healed them and met their needs and called them to follow him. And those people were transformed not because of where they started in a position of belief, but because they met Jesus. They met Jesus and they heard the words of Jesus. They were welcomed by him. They were loved by him. And when we welcome people and love them, faith grows. <laughs> I saw a statistic said uh, 90% of new members will stay in a church if, one, they can articulate their faith, meaning they can actually explain what they believe and why they believe it about Jesus. Secondly, they belong to a subgroup like a Bible study, a choir, a small group. And thirdly, if they have four to eight close relationships in that church. Studies show that 90% of people will stay in a church if those criteria are met. And notice two of those are purely relational. Again, so what we're seeing is often what draws people in is not looking for a particular belief, but when they see the body of Christ functioning as it should and loving them, they are drawn into that community and are in turn drawn towards Jesus. And this goes back to what I said earlier, that our job as belonging to the body is to move people towards the center. It's to move people towards Jesus. So let's put a visual on this. If you had our devotional, you saw this uh, visual. So it's a series of circles that represent where people are at in their relationship with Jesus. So the first one is community. And these are the people around us who are unchurched. This is the community that we live in. Um, they live in this community. They may be aware of our church's existence. And, you know, they may have even visited it a time or two. But for the most part, they are unchurched and likely have not decided to follow Jesus yet. These are people that we probably rub shoulders with every day. That you work with, that you know. But they probably don't know Jesus yet. The second is the crowd. Uh, the crowd usually consists of people who maybe they have an interest in God, maybe they attend church, at least occasionally, and they probably consider themselves part of the church. That's one of the trends we've seen is people who even go to church as little as quarterly will consider themselves like, that's my church, I go to that church. And so they may believe or, or, or see themselves as part of the church, um, but they do not yet have a strong commitment to Christ or to church. They're not really involved beyond showing up on the occasional basis. They maybe come through the doors every now and then, but it's not a regular thing. Thirdly is the congregation. Um, these are people who are here on a regular basis. They're part of our community. They're seeking Jesus, um, and they attend and give regularly. And in general, support the vision and values of the church. Does that make sense? So then fourthly is the committed. These are people who are truly growing in a relationship with Jesus. They're establishing habits and disciplines of a disciple. They are all in. They're committed to be and grow more like Jesus. So these people not only attend, but they're involved. When stuff is happening with the church, they're involved. And then fifthly is the core. From among the committed, there are groups of people in every church that I've ever been at who serve sacrificially to see the ministries of the church happen. Um, these people are the core. They give their time, their energy, their loyalty, their finances, their resources. Simply put, without these core people, the church would not function the way that it does. 
These people are growing in Christ-likeness and still growing. They are sacrificial and they want to see the kingdom of God built and have a deep spiritual life and they want to see others grow. So if we can use these levels, what I want to see is that in all these levels, um, in, in, in all of these that make up the community of the church, um, we can probably place ourselves somewhere on there. <laughs> if we're honest, we should be thinking about where, where do I fit in on that? Um, and in every community I've ever been a part of, there's people all over this chart in every church. Not everyone is in the same spot, right? We're all growing. We're all at a different level. We're all at a different place in the journey. But there's, no matter where you find yourself, you can still be part of our community. And we are surrounded by people in the valley and people we work with and people we rub shoulders with every day who are in that outside circle of the community. And so what is our job? Our job is no matter where we or other people are in these levels, help them move towards the center. Help them advance towards Jesus. It doesn't matter where they start off at, whether they're on the outside in the community or whether they're in the congregation or committed or even the core, the goal of Christian community or at least a big goal, is to help one another move towards that center of knowing Jesus. Wherever they're at. If they're regular attenders, teach them what it means to fully know Christ. Um, For those who are committed, keep discipling people and make us look even more like Jesus. And to the core, don't grow content with where you're at, right? But strive And run the race of endurance to go for the prize, which is Christ himself, and help others do the same. And to the ones on the outside, maybe the conversation is, how do we get them to go from community to crowd? And then from crowd to congregation. See, I think a lot of times we, um, and I'll help but we almost try to hit the home run every time, Right? (laughs) <laughs> we, we, we want to see people saved. That is the end goal. But sometimes we try to go for it all on one thing, right? And sometimes that comes across in a very off-putting way to outsiders, I think. And so maybe sometimes the question we should ask is not, how do I go for the home run every time? But how do I move them just one spot closer to Jesus? Statistics have shown that the gospel is shared with a lot of people several times before they accept Christ. And so maybe our goal should be to just try to get them one step closer. And that's why our passage this morning um, is important. It says, let us consider how we may spur on one another towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. So how do we accomplish this? How do we help one another move towards the center? Well, this verse tells us, number one, meet together. (laughs) Not giving up meeting together. Um, This most basic thing that we can do as the body of Christ, come together and meet together and worship together. Now, this has been a difficult year for that, (laughs) certainly. And this is not a push um, for um, everyone to adopt my way of thinking about COVID or anyone else. I want everyone to make a wise decision for them and their family. Um, But at the end of the day, we need to come together as a body of Christ. The fastest way for us to regress in our faith and our spiritual maturity is to stop meeting with the body. That is the fastest way to step backwards in our walk. And like I said in the beginning, God designed this whole thing to be lived out in community. And so when you take community away, faith will inevitably weaken. And we won't be headed towards the center, but away from the center. So I would encourage you, make it a commitment and a priority to meet together physically and regularly. 
If this pandemic has shown me one thing, it's how desperately we truly need this. And for those watching online and those of you who are still staying away, this is not pushing me for you to come back um, sooner than you think you should. But when this is over, online or videos or anything like that is not a substitute for coming together as the body of Christ. It is not a substitute that is meant to be used long term. I've heard some people say things like, man, I want to do this online thing forever. I'm like, no, (laughs) no. (laughs) Uh, We need to meet together. It's the most basic thing we can do to help one another move towards the center. Secondly, we are to spur each other on towards love and good deeds. Spur, not spit, again. I just want to be clear on that. The verse said, and let us consider how we may spur on one another towards love and good deeds. The second thing it gives us is that we are to help and steer one another towards love and good deeds. It is in the body of Christ and the church coming together that I often get fired up, that I get ideas, that I get excited and motivated, um, and learn how to love others more deeply. There's something about being with you all that pumps me up, it excites me, it motivates me in my walk with God. Um, you guys spur me towards love and good deeds. And I hope I do the same towards you because that's what we need. We need the motivation and energy and passion that comes when we come together. 1 Thessalonians 5.14 says, And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, and be patient with them all. (laughs) I love that last line, and be patient with them all. (laughs) When I'm not with you, It's easy for my motivation to teeter off, to be not so fired up, and to just lose a whole lot of uh, passion and motivation for doing the things that I should. And that's why we need one another to share our passions. That's why I love testimonies because, man, that just, you feed off of the testimonies of other people. It motivates us towards the center of knowing Christ more. And this can affect even those who do not know Christ yet. Those people in the community and the outside circle, when they see love and action and the body of Christ coming together and being loving and doing good deeds, it has a huge and lasting impact on them. Because you cannot argue, or at least it's very hard to argue with people who are passionate about Jesus and are showing it in tangible ways around them. And that's what we need more of. And that's why coming together is important because it spurs us towards love and good deeds. And then thirdly, we need to encourage one another. It says encouraging one another all the more as you see today approaching. It's so basic, but it's so important. Encourage one another. When you see someone making progress, towards the center, cheer them on. When you see someone regressing, encourage them to refocus. I've been so thankful for some of you during the past several months as, man, I've been very discouraged at times as we've gone through this pandemic and stuff. And those of you who have taken the time to encourage me, man, I have to say that meant a lot. That, you know, when we went from, you know, a church of, 70 to 80 a year ago, and I was staring out at 20 people. Um, Man, encouragement went a long, long way. And I know in my past, just having some of you older saints come alongside me and cheer me on as as I pursued Jesus was vital. It was huge. So who can you encourage today? Who can you cheer on? Who can you help fix their eyes on Jesus? Sometimes a little encouragement can make a huge difference in someone's life, and you may not even know it. But sometimes just a little of encouragement can help someone make progress towards knowing the center. First Thessalonians 5.11, Therefore encourage one another and build each other up. So my hope and prayer is that in this church, it would be a body and not a place you simply attend because you like to preaching or not like to preaching or something you do out of habit, but it would be a place you belong 
to. Amen. That it would be a place where you know you are loved and you love others. A place where you have deep commitments and ties to one another. A place where your faith is shaped not just by preaching, but even more so because of your connection to your fellow Christians. And I pray it would be a place that even those who do not yet know Jesus would feel welcomed and loved and be shaped by the example we show them. A place where they would feel like they belong and that by belonging to us in relationship, it would open up the door for them to belong to Jesus. That the gospel would take root in their lives and shape them as they join our community. And so, as we shift from me to we, we have to go from just believing the same things to belonging to together. Belief is important, don't get me wrong. I don't want anyone to think that's not important. But as we believe together, we also need to belong together. To be a tight-knit body. To belong together where if someone's missing, we notice and we feel it, right? And that that type of community, a community that is that close-knit and belongs together and has love and good deeds, that is a community that is primed to make an impact on the world that surrounds it. And so I pray that we would be that community and that we would undoubtedly bring others into the community and into the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. May that be us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of your church. I thank you for the gift of the people that are in this room right now who practice these things on a regular basis, Father. I thank you for how I've seen this body mobilize in just the past few weeks to give meals to people, to meet needs and to love on people, Lord. But God, help us to do that all the more. And Father, wherever we're at in our walk with you right now, may we keep moving towards you and may we help others move towards you as well. And may it form into one fluid motion of belonging to one another and getting closer to you, Father. Lord, I pray that this week, whatever we face, whoever we encounter, may they experience your love coming through us. And when we have the opportunity, may we engage in conversations that maybe help someone take one more step towards you. Go before us in your power, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, go with him. You are dismissed.